this problem as a design exercise should remind you of one of those Aesop fable stories of this father asking his sons to first individually break twigs and then stack them all into a bundle and try to break them and taught them the lesson of unity. It was a lot harder to break those, that bundle of twigs. So, in a similar manner, the same, you should expect a similar kind of a, uh, outcome from the engineering analysis sense. That the shape efficiency factor of this bundle of tubes, very thin walled, very narrow diameter tubes, is going to be much higher than that single large tube in terms of its shape efficiency factor. And that will begin to show you the power of not only the analysis techniques at the simplest levels that you have um, learned up to this point, but being able to apply to them to the kinds of structures that are found in nature and the, the relevance of those bio-inspired uh, uh, structures that you and materials that you analyzed uh, during the first midterm. I will not go into the derivation of how this shape factor is at the microscopic level. Suffic suffice to say that it is 0 0.56 times r divided by t. So if you insert r and you insert t, this is a shape efficiency factor of 56 lot higher than the 12.5 that you saw for the larger tube with the larger relative thickness than this. Right? So these bundles of these tubes give you enormous efficiency in terms of um, uh, the stiffness that they carry, the load that they might carry. So stiffness limited design, right? it turns out, can be addressed in a similar manner for very complex structures found in nature, for hybrid structures that we build deliberately through various composite manufacturing techniques. We'll try to see if we can explore some of that um, for the second midterm as well. But basically it comes down to the fact that the shape efficiency factor, the microscopic scale, is proportional to the ratio of the densities of the two kinds of cellular structures to the power of square root. Further, if you have a number of different shapes put together and arranged in space, then the overall uh, stiffness is a product of those multiple shape efficiency factors, not only of the individual material, but the various shape arrangements that are made overall. And that's how you end up getting a much higher structural efficiency from these kinds of assemblage of structures. So the key takeaway that we saw through the examples is that shape factors multiply in hierarchical shapes. And one of the powers of additive manufacturing, which uh, UFL has a phenomenal footprint to connect to design engineers, materials researchers, and uh, manufacturing engineers bring together those types of uh, capabilities. It is possible to discover new shapes, build new shapes, and build highly efficient structures. We, took a sh uh, we looked at structural efficiency as one aspect um, in these examples. It can be extended to thermomechanical efficiency, fluid flow efficiency, mass transfer, catalytic activity, all these things. And uh, that's the joy of this material selection and materials design. Starting out with mechanical engineering analysis, it can be extended to a wide range of fields. In the next class, we'll look at how the choice of design, the choice of material, allow for connecting them to a preferred process that can be selected to transform that material into that given shape. And so a third constraint is put into your overall consideration, which is manufacturability. And then taking your skills as a design engineer to be able to design for manufacturability. 
and so the integrated grantor tools allow you to then round up this whole journey that we have taken in terms of de design to manufacture digital tools the theme of the class so see you then